So wait, first, oh, you're yeah, starting it already? We're recording now. Oh my gosh. It's the Cougarland <laughs> oh podcast. Oh my gosh. At random. And whammy, actually, Cindy's on a point here. I want to let her go with it. She was talking about a Greece trip. And we're here with Barbara, too. Oh, do you want me to do the point on Greece or the snow class? Start with snow class. Why not? That was elementary school. Okay. Right? What was that class in the snow? That was, yeah, that was elementary. And Ralph Schuberg and I, we were in Ms. Lombardo's class while you guys were in. Benantes? Could have been Miss Benantes. Yeah, I think it was Miss Benantes if that's fifth grade. That's yeah. who you were with. We were with Lombardo. Oh, okay. Were we in different hotels or the same the same program? I thought we were all in the same no, hotel. No, you all saw you all saw Ralph there. I was there too. Apparently all ignored me. <laughs> no. Nah. I was too busy. Listen, I was trying to get to my tape recorder because I was getting into music because my parents started playing disco music around the house. And I wanted to hear that song. Aw, freak out. And I wanted to go. Oh, oh my. Remember that song? Yes, they played that a lot. They played, yeah. I just heard that song yesterday on Sirius. Right? I mean, I, I didn't have a boom box yet. I was like a little kid. They, my parents did not get me into the technology. I had one of those tape recorders. You know, kids like, hi, I want to hear my voice with a little microphone. Hello, you. Yeah. Like, oh, wow. It's podcasting. But you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's, that's where we were. Um, but that was, I love class in the snow. Do you still ski or did you ski after? Um, I have skied a couple times, uh, not often, obviously, but I still remember how to ski every time I go. I'm not good, but you know, I still make it down the hill and I'm not on the bunny slope. One way or the other. (laughs) I'm not on the bunny slope, but you know, I make it down there whether I'm standing or not, you know. Oh, and what I thought was so funny when you guys were talking about the ski school, I remember those pummel rides that you put between your legs and you weren't supposed to sit on them. Well, yep. apparently I couldn't get that through my head and I kept falling and kept falling and kept falling. And finally the ski instructor was so annoyed and pissed off. He grabbed me, put me under his arm, you know, carried me around like a stack of potatoes and rode up the ski lift with me. <laughs> oh my. I, I did the sitting thing and then the thing shot out and hit the thing. And then I yeah. also, I get up the hill and I let go and I rolled in and knocked over a bunch of people. I mean, I, I was like convinced I, I, I could ski, but I couldn't the first year. Cause like I said earlier, like, okay, let's put on some skis and then go down a slight incline, like by the parking lot. Like, Ooh, you went down a little bumpy boo. You didn't turn, you yeah. didn't stop. I didn't have to stop. So I, I go, yeah, we're skiing. Go down the hill and my skis just took off. I'm like, whoa, what's going on? But <laughs> I remember being so terrified because they wouldn't let us have our ski poles and they, you know, make you go down this. Well, they said it was the bunny slope, but to me, it looked like a giant hill, you know, <laughs> and I felt like I was going to die. And the guy was like, go down, you know, snowshoe or snow plow, you know, and I'm like, yeah, okay. It's, it's not funny. that easy. Well, everything seemed bigger than like the North 40 looked like Montana. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's relative. Yeah. Did, did you go to the snow class? Did you go class in the snow, Barbara? Were you there at that point? I wasn't. I didn't get the, I didn't move back there till 83. I was born in Vicenza and then we left with my dad and moved all over. But we didn't get stationed there to 83. 83. And Cindy and I, Cindy, you were there. So were you there twice, you said, or? I was there, well, twice as a child and once married with my own kids. That's right. Um, So I went there in, uh, well, 72. What grade were you in then, I was uh, in fifth grade. I was in, uh, no, fifth grade. No, I'm kidding. I was in kindergarten. I was five. My math. Okay. Yeah. I was a little older. (laughs) So I was in Germany in 72 in Würzburg, Germany. And then I moved to Italy in 75, and I was there from 75 to 79. And then we went to Fort Devens, and I was there for junior high. So from 79 to 82, I can't remember whether, whether we, I think that we moved to Italy the summer of 81. Okay. Did so you, I was there at Fort it, Devens, did you know Mark Rivera? Because he was living there. I know he came to our school later. No, but you know who yeah. followed me to Fort Devens? Ralph Schuberg. Oh, my that gosh. Dude, I swear, we were, <laughs> like, together from grade school to high school, you know? I mean, every time I moved, the year later, there he was, showing up. And I'm like, what the hell, you know? <laughs> He's like, yeah, hey, yes. I missed you. I'm here. 
Where were we moving next? <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. Move to Italy, there's Ralph. Move to uh, Fort Devens, there's Ralph. Move back to Italy, there's Ralph again. Wow. <laughs> and I well, haven't seen him since. Well, we'll see him soon. I was just talking to him. He didn't think anyone remembered him. And here you are. So I do remember you. Three times. Right? I remember you, <laughs> Ralph, because you followed me all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> well, you remember Ralph, too, don't you, Barbara? Oh, yeah, because he went on our, that Greece trip with us. Okay. Yes, he did. Yes, okay. he did. See, that's the thing. Like, there's a lot of people. When you leave Vicenza, there's nobody waving for you at the train station. People are no. like, oh, I got to go to post. I got to go to the gym. Like, you get in your yes. cycle, whatever you're doing, you know. And, and then poof, you're gone, but you're so used to people leaving that you don't make a big deal about it. You get numb to it. Like, oh, they're getting sucked up into the Star Trek ship. They're getting, exactly. you know, yeah. being beamed up, right? Bye. Yep. And, and that's, you know, people felt they're, you know, like, oh, nobody cared. Well, we couldn't keep in touch. How did you know? You couldn't, like, get back yeah. home. Hey, yeah. You couldn't call. Which, right. Yeah. Most people didn't have phones in Italy, you know. Exactly. I remember them having locks on the phones because it was so expensive to have a phone. Right. Yep. You know. Did you live in Villaggio, Cindy? Yes, I lived in Villaggio, two doors or two buildings up from Barbara. Yeah. Oh, wow, I get the we perfect were, team here. We you were guys. on First Sergeant's <laughs> Row. Yeah, okay. we were on First Sergeant's Row. Yeah. And that was that was another thing because Derek, uh, uh, Derek Gould pointed out, you know, but he said it was a Sergeant Major's Row and it wasn't Sergeant Major's Row, it was First Sergeant's Row. Sergeant Major's had that oh, course. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, right, right, right when you came in to the left. Yeah, that was, yeah. that was with all the trees in the middle. That was first Sergeant's row. Yep. Yeah. Well, well, I think uh, Fred Puatua and Mark Rivera lived over there in the command. Yeah, Sergeant they Major, lived over there. Right? They exactly. Did. No, I remember mm -hmm. where you live because I walk out seeing you guys by your house. All the boys driving around. Hoo hoo, there's some girls. And you know, me and, me, you know, me and Mark Rivera, whoever, were just leaving his house like, yeah, it's, there's Barb's over there, Cindy. And, you know, we're just like, oh, cool. We're just going to Vlad. You are walking to the back part to maybe go find a beer. I have no idea. And what, and what yeah. other, what other high school is going to ever have the story like, oh, I knew this bar and that bar. Like, this is grown up talk. You get this in most American kids do that when they're in college. Like, yeah, we went to O'Malley. Exactly. You know, we went yep. to the yeah. Spinner Raker, whatever, right? Yep. Um, so you guys stayed in touch all this time, too, pretty much, I'm sure. No, yeah, I tried to lose Barbara. I tried yeah. to lose her, and she won't let me lose her. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we did, we lost touch for years, and I lived in Fort... 12 years. Yeah, 12 I, was years. In, I don't know if I was in Fort Benning, or I think, and I was in Florida. No, you were in Florida. I was at Fort Benning. Yeah, and I was like... I don't know where she's at. So I finally figured out, I remember what her mom's name was. I knew they lived, in, they moved to Washington. So I started off with her mom, stalking and finding her mom. And I finally yeah. got- Yeah, that bitch stalks um, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. She called me up at midnight, midnight. I'm in bed <laughs> sleeping, the phone rings. And she asked for my maiden name, you know, yep. not my married name. And she goes, is this Cindy Graft? Or no, I believe you said Cynthia Graft is what you I said. I might have, yeah. And the first thought that came through my mind was, I paid all them damn bills. That was the first <laughs> thought that came to my mind. <laughs> You're like, is it the MPs? They know my formal name from high school. It could be the MPs. <laughs> right. Right? Well, I paid those, side, really? those bills are paid, <laughs> you know? Wow. And, so, and we were on the phone all night long into the We morning, were off for like I, five or six hours. Well, yeah, here, yeah. We're, we're, we're back with the party line on, you know, remember when we were kids in Italy, you'd get a VHS tape that had some American commercials. You can now get on the party line. Hey, Sam, yeah. hey, Billy. They're all like kicking into their phones with the long extended cord. Like, hey, yeah. you're talking to 12 friends at once. It's amazing. <laughs> it was like the internet, right. you know, and now we get this. I can't imagine what we could have done with Zoom back in the day. You oh, know? could oh, you imagine? God. Oh my God. <laughs> right? That would have been, no, because, we all had, I, I remember living in Villaggio, we all had the same curfew, which was the last bus that yes. hit Villaggio, which was the 11 o'clock bus. Yeah. So everybody had the same, can you imagine if we had cell phones and all that? Because there was many times we missed that bus and the had rain. to run two miles <laughs> from post through the back, the cornfield, you know, yeah. into Villaggio because the rule was we all had siblings. So our younger siblings had to stay at the bus stop until we got there. 
you know, and we'd be like, oh yeah, the bus was late, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I didn't quite have that curfew. Um, I started, you know, I'd go in and out of Villaggio because that's where the cool parties would be. Someone's dad's on TDY or, or, you know, hey, our house is open. You, you never knew. <laughs> It was a rotation, like, oh, they're, they're going to the field. Fantastic. Yeah. You know, so someone would have an open house for that time. Exactly. Right? Not well, to say uh, open house as you're thinking of now, but yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm well, saying it's so and so. Barbara's house. house was always the party house because her parents let her stay out in the front yard. So I would go to bed and sneak out the house after my yeah. parents went to bed and meet her at her house. You know, and that's where, you know, we would continue. But in your, in your pajamas. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I, I be, I, are you kidding? No, I was fully dressed. And as a matter of fact, my idea of sneaking out was uh, where did I go, Barbara? Out the front door. Door. Because my parents had their ears tuned to that window. So I knew if I lifted that window, they were going to be busting in my bedroom saying, where you at? You know? Yeah, but she they weren't listening. Out the front door. Yeah. I'd walk out the front door. They didn't have that door, you know. And it squeaked <laughs> and everything. <laughs> there, yep. there was some houses where, like, yeah, this house is cool. This is great. Well, Mark Rivera always had a nice open hosting home for parties, too. Yeah, um, he did. He did. Yes, he did. <laughs> Much to his parents' surprise. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, Many I mean, times. Unfortunately, his father's passed, so he will not be watching this one. So we can just his see what mom really has happened. too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you kidding? His dad walked in on us several times having parties. Oh, yeah. So we got caught yeah. lots of times by Mark's parents. Yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> and you get <laughs> we caught. were never. You know, you'd get caught, and you'd never learn. Like I got to do it again. Got to do it right? again. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. There was one time that Mark had some big party. I don't remember. I mean, it was a big party. Like furniture was moved. Things were broken, and he was so nervous about his mom and dad coming back that he had me come the next morning and put everything back where it belonged, like put the hamper back with the with the little the crease in the carpet and all that stuff. And his the mom came on later on that day and came to my house. She goes, "Thank you for cleaning up my house." <laughs> I'm like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> like, you I know, know Mark didn't do it. <laughs> they were always yeah. they were always really nice to me. The Riveras, you know, they were always cool. Um, they were nice to all of us. I, yeah. I, I ran into Mark uh, a couple of years ago. I was doing a Navy podcast, and I did one with a sailor that was on my ship in Vietnam while I was in high school with you guys or elementary school. Oh, wow. And he's like, I really like this podcast. Why don't you come visit me? I'll pay for your vacation because we both had the same job and stuff. And it was like to the ship, if you're stationed on a ship, there was 350 people. So there's sets of people, just like the post, sets yeah. of people in our high school, right? So it's a, a place. It's like a set. You're in the movie. You're in the TV series, but your character goes in and goes out and comes back, right? Yeah. So he loved it. So I said, sure, this sounds interesting. So I went out there and I said, oh, we got to go meet my buddy, Mark. And we also met some other Navy friends. And he's like, wow, you know people everywhere in Kansas. I can't believe it. I go, oh, you'd, you'd be surprised, man. We can go <laughs> on and on and on, state to state and world to world, pretty much. Yeah. Especially with the Cougars, you know? Yeah. And yeah. So it was nice to see Mark. He was all happy. Happy family, married guy, you know, not the yeah. wild, wild Mark I knew from high school. No. And, you know, really, really pleasant to see him. It was really, I was like, oh, okay. I was just waiting for him to like, come on, let's do shots. But no, it didn't happen. <laughs> no, you know, so. Well, we, we all grew up. We right. all, you know, we all grew up. Some right. of us did anyways, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think a lot of us probably grew up wilder than our children will ever be. You know, Thank goodness. Right? I yeah. can handle that. Oh, well, shoot. You'd be at home <laughs> tracking your kid on the phone with a GPS tracker. I see you. You know? Yeah. You know, I, I was just talking to my mom about it, you know, how, how much freedom we were allowed living over there. And there was no way to track us. No phones, no internet, you know, none of that. And, and I mean, I remember we'd get on the train and go to Venice for the day or, you know, the beach you know, or we'd go to the mountains. I mean, I just yeah. remember we just went everywhere. I don't ever remember parents, you know. Were, I know. Yeah, they were in the background like in, in Charlie Brown. You didn't know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, yeah. And then uh, another thing about Villaggio, living in Villaggio is the Cabianeris used to come to Barbara's house for uh, uh, coffee. Coffee, yes. So whenever we would get caught by the Cabianeris, 
Car, uh, Barbara used to uh, threaten them that her mother wouldn't feed them anymore. And so they <laughs> never would rat us out. How yeah. nice. You guys were working it like a little female mafia. That's pretty nice. Oh, you don't, yeah, you yeah. don't even know how bad we worked shit. I mean. Yeah. My mom <laughs> let the cat out. My mom was born and raised in New Chance, and her family was fairly wealthy at the time when she was little. So they knew all the people in Vicenza. And the Capo Marichale of the Carboneries knew my mother when she was a baby. Mm. I didn't realize knew me when I was a baby. Ah. Oh, along with most of the bar owners in Vicenza, which I didn't know either. Wow. They're like, there's your mom. Oh, that's, always not, felt, that's her. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I always felt like I had someone, like someone watching me all the time because all these people that knew me and I didn't know who they were thinking they were just, you know, the bar owner didn't Hello. realize. <laughs> my mom had call and say, hey, Barbara's coming down. Keep an eye on her. <laughs> and it's funny because like you talk about feeling being watched all the time. There was no internet, but there was this sense. Yeah. Uh, well, try it having your dad as the PE teacher, you know, and, <laughs> and you're like, anything you do, the rumor mill gets to him in PE class. Len uh, lit his hair on fire, jogged naked through a cornfield. Okay, that's going <laughs> right. to be there first thing yeah. in the morning. Like, so how's the corn? What are you talking about? Oh, you know. I well, know. Your, dad, <laughs> your dad worked as a coach. My mom, if y'all remember, worked in the nurse's <laughs> office. <laughs> yeah, now it's coming it, back. Yeah, my mom worked in the nurse's office. So when we would skip a class, like we'd skip Belligio's class, you know, All and we would, we would, well, remember they used to go around class to class, the student would, class to class to collect the attendance, and we would meet them, we would meet them as we're skipping whatever class, and have them mark us down as here. Yep. <laughs> wow, so many angles, you know, yeah. certain people, certain furby, as they would say. And yeah, it's Italian. Uh, it's say some of us were smarter than others. <laughs> well, you guys love me because I was a big shining, flying, you know, phoenix spectacle of light that took off of everything anyone else did. I did you my were own a, You were a blast in high school. I tried. Oh to yeah. Be. I tried I to think be. A lot of people lived vicariously through you. <laughs> well, you know, I, I made this funny comment like a new kid would come to town, and the one-upmanship, like, yeah. I jumped my I jumped my car over a bush. Yeah, you ever jumping over a speeding car? I'll try that one. Oh, try, let's do it. Ride your bike real fast when the train's coming. I mean, it was like exactly. Things, but I'm just yeah. saying, some kid comes from Kentucky. You know what we do back home? We like to set our bicycles on fire and dance around them. We're like, what? okay, let's tip try. over cow. Yeah, yeah, tip, tip over, over cow. T <laughs> cow tipping. You, you gave me a great story. This goes to Mark Parkins oh, and uh, Emma Brothers, and uh, they were out by where the Emmas live. They go, let's go cow tipping. So they went over there to tip over these cows. I'm pretty sure it was them. Um, and they're like, they're in the middle of it. All of a sudden these cows start just hauling ass. They're like 20 mile an hour, just cars coming at you. Wah! You know, they're like, oh, oh gosh, gosh. <laughs> cow tipping. They, they don't just fall over. So they ran out of that field, get out of there with their life and limb, luckily. But yeah, that's, well, let's try that one. That's how it worked. But it was, uh, we were little mini grownups, little lives of the party. We were we, we live by the scarcity mindset, like, you better party now, because when you go to the States, you won't be able to anymore. Because or tomorrow, so-and-so is not going to be here. <laughs> right, right. The sca It's scarcity principle. And yeah. And, and then, I mean, Vicenza was a tiny little boring town. It's what we did to it that made it exciting. Would you yeah. agree? Yes. I mean, yeah, I'll completely we did, agree. We did lots. I mean, yeah. down to, we'd run out of money and go to my dad's work and ask the GIs for money. <laughs> to my oh we my gosh my dad needs her. 50 bucks my dad needs 50 bucks don't worry oh no they knew i was they knew we were going out drinking so you know they gave and they would hand it over too i mean i'm i'm out of money guys and they'd get here's 10 <laughs> here's five here's you know is that enough i'd walk out of there yeah. with like 100 bucks we got money guys let's go drinking you know <laughs> Wow, you're creative. I like I like Cynthia's hustle. But you yeah, see, I wasn't yeah. always I would run into you guys passing through, you know, party hopping, yep. event hopping, a game. Wait, wait. Do you remember this? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the drinking games. What yeah. the jungle the jungle hunt. The jungle hunt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am not so innocent, people. But whoever said I was. 
<laughs> yeah, but you know, I was gonna say, are you lying to people telling you're innocent? Well, yeah, I was just gonna get a priest collar and come on here and misrepresent myself. It's you not know? Halloween yet. <laughs> it's not Halloween. <laughs> well, you know, it's like I've interviewed different people different times. You guys are just we have so much in common, it's funny. And some of us get in trouble for it. You guys didn't get as much trouble for it. But then we were smart. You guys were very <laughs> more, you guys were calculating. I was like, let's just try this with no afterthought, you know? Yeah. Um, but I had fun. I didn't do anything that would really put me in jail in the States no. for an extensive period of time. I don't think any of us did. No, no, but yeah. it, the, the way it was, if you ran into uh, some square, um, you know, square officer or somebody, who was in charge and had to reprimand you, you know. Cynthia's frozen. There you are. Are you back, Cynthia? <laughs> Did you unfreeze? Freeze frame. The, oh, see? Yeah, my, yeah. There you are. You're back. Well, I'm back. So, so that's the thing. It's like I remember last time I saw Barbara uh, North 40. Um, I think you had got married to Mike, and we we're I saw you guys in the North 40 at one of the um, carnivals. And I left soon. Mike and I got married in '87, so it was before that then. Oh, '87? No, no, it was '87. Yeah, it was '87. Got married in July of '87. Yeah, and that was Fourth of July carnival. So you either were about to. We were married right after. We were married on the ninth. Wow, I was gone right after that, and then boom. Which is why you didn't come to our wedding then. Yeah, I was in Canada. (laughs) It was a hard hitchhike from there. But uh, when did you leave, Cindy? I left in 85, mm. right after the Greece trip. I didn't even know I was leaving either. No, my parents moved us out, <laughs> shut everything down while I was on the Greece trip. Yep. You're yeah. just like, come home and guess what? You're moving? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Where, where did- Barbara's mom, no, it was because on that Greece trip, Vern spent all of of our money and we had no money for food we had no money to uh we were supposed to be in a hotel the whole time we ended up having to go to the, to the teen club, club on the island of crete the uh, uh, Araculon base Araculon. Yeah. Air base. and yeah uh, the Araculon air base and i remember that we uh we ha- had no money for food we had to all put our money in a kiddie pool and Barbara and I had to go to the commissary and buy us bread and peanut butter and jelly. And she was the only one with a ration card. Yeah. Coffee was rationed. Tampons Bananas. were rationed. Wow. Oh my God, remember? Yes. This was Bananas in Crete? Was this, is, this was the base and, in Crete, yeah. really? Yes, that was at Araculon Air Base in Crete. Yes. So and it was a I month was long only- trip? It was a month, 30 days. What did, what did this guy do? Did he go to barracks and, and lose we were the poker screwed. game? <laughs> did, did we you were go? Do you remember the first remember two days there, the second day. Say again. Yeah. I remember tour contestants. Yeah, I was asking the lady, do you remember they did tour contestants at the teen club? Um, no, I don't remember that. Well, you would have to work like car washes and dances and whatever, and you make money, and then as a group, at the end, you could go. We could go to Greece for thirty days. That's why there's like maybe eight or nine of us that went on this trip. Maybe ten. Okay. So Vern, the director, crooked ass that he was, him mm-hmm. and uh, some girl named Christy, who was supposed to be Christy, our first I can't remember. person. And yeah. We all went down there and we were supposed to stay. First day right into your boyfriend's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we went down there, supposed to be 30 days in a hotel, all food paid for, everything. We get down there two days later, all of a sudden Vern says, we have no money. And we move out of the hotel, move across the street to the teen club. And um, and we're like, well, what's for dinner? Well, we don't have any money. We've got 28 days left here. What do you mean we have no money? He's like, no, nope, we have no money. So we're all making phone calls to our parents. I call my mom and I say, hey, mom, you know, we're here. We have no money. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I mean, I got the money you sent, you know, because my sister went with me. So I was like, you got that money you you sent me and Kella, but everyone else, Dennis is without money, Cindy's without money, Ralph's without, everyone's without money. So she sent money down there and my mom, my parents were pissed. I bet. So I what? called three times to get money, but yeah, I was the only one with a ration card. Wow. The only way to get bananas 
coffee. Yep. And, and remember, we were all smokers too. So we had to buy cigarettes. No, of course, you needed cigarettes because that was part of the daily yeah. thing. So that I've was got important. all these girls coming up saying, hey, I need this and that. And I'm like, I've only got one ration left. Are you serious? Can't you share with somebody else? <laughs> oh my goodness. I no, I would have found I would have found a hustle. Good. It was horrible. Go on, Sidney. So then Barbara and I became friends with uh two guys that worked at the the food land at yeah. the time. We became friends with these two guys and they would out the back door give us cases of beer, you know, <laughs> and tampons and stuff like that <laughs> stuff that we couldn't you know because we were too poor you did you, did you, we went you, see, you would just not share it with Vern. you're like Vern, all you get is one tampon oh, oh. <laughs> that, it was funny because we that, didn't burn nothing Vern yeah. lost complete control of us after that complete control yep. we <laughs> absolutely blackmailed the shit out of him on that I kept, trip all i kept telling him like look when i have to call my parents and ask for money and I have to use my rations to get these people their their food and their personal items. You no longer get to control me at all. I can do whatever the hell I want to. How old were you, you get, guys then? Call my mom and dad. How it was you? my junior year. It was yeah. after my junior year, going into my senior year, and Barbara had just graduated. I, it might yeah. have been my senior year when I went. I was only there for about ten days or so. I remember. My brother being there, Mike Mitchell. Um, I think Mark was there with me. Mark. Yeah, Parkins. I think that was the that one was before. Trip. Where might you only went to Greece. Before. We well, no, we went to Greece and Crete, but we just hopped into Athens and we took off to Arachalon, and then we okay. hung out there for a little bit. Then we caught a cruise back. <laughs> we took a cruise um, both ways. Was it a cruise or a ferry boat? So more like a cruise boat, but just. Uh, well, we said the or... same thing. It had a. <laughs> oh, it was a ferry boat. A pool. Had... And it had like three dance clubs. It had a restaurant. It yeah. had all the, you know, it, yeah. it had all the stuff on it. it, it you know, it, it seemed like it was a cruise, but it was actually a ferry boat that we yeah. went on. We had, yeah. um, and, we, we had those cabins. I mean, we had rooms for sleeping. I don't know. I mean, oh, yeah, we did too. Too. we did too. Yeah. yeah. I think it was a cruise uh, ship. I do because I was in the Navy. I think it was a cruise ship, but the ferry boat might've been totally decked out too, though. I'm not saying it wouldn't because I've seen what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, when, but, we went, when we went, the Kitty Laurel was going on. Oh, the the hijacking. A cruise ship that got hijacked. Yes, we got we, there like two days after the hijacking exactly. happened, and it was funny because well, when we were on the cruise ship, one of the games we made up because you remember we hit like a little storm and the boat was rocking, <laughs> so we made up a drinking game of. Who you had to run down the hallway, and every time you hit the wall, you had to take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's a fun game. That's very creative. I it didn't last very long. Yeah, I mean, no. would you, the question is, would you do it today? No. Yes. Yeah. See. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she would. She would because I would take <laughs> her. Yes, she would. <laughs> Well, yes, have you guys, she would. Have you guys gone to any of the reunions or anything like that in this whole The very whole time? first one in Houston, and that was the one that... Uh, That's the one I went to. I went with you, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 Me, me, you, and Carter. Uh, did Carter go? No, Carter didn't go. No. Me, um, you, and Dennis were there, I think. Wasn't Dennis there? Dennis and Tony. And Tony, Duffy. yes. Yep. That's the only one we went to. Oh, wow. I didn't go to that one. I went like, shit, uh, 15, 20 years later. I went to one in San Antonio. It was cool. Mark Perkins, That's my buddy, was there. That's all I needed. You know, yeah. there's a you know, bunch of other familiar faces. Uh, Johnny Cohut and Tree and, you know. Just oh, my a, gosh, Tree. I forgot about him. I know. Oh, Tree. He's the, mayor, <laughs> he's the mayor of where he lives, apparently. Someone told me they visit him in his hometown, and he's like, they're like, Tree. But I don't know if they call no, him Tree. Yeah. I think oh they call him Jeff. Gosh. But, yeah, he's real popular over there from what I heard. And he's got I that big personality. I remember when he first came to the school and he was in my science class with uh, my biology class with Mr. Ritchie. Mm -hmm. And he said his name was Tree and we asked why, obviously, because he's tall. And we were like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so your, your name I'm is obvious. Tree because you're tall? And he goes, no, because of this. And he literally took his leg and put it on the door, the top door frame, you know? Oh, Who wow. Who could do that? Yeah. 
I love it. Because I can do this. That's awesome. That's awesome. He he's a real charmer. He's a fun guy. You know that that was, was a good sweet trip. in high school. Yeah, he was always yeah. nice. I mean, I you know I say this on here. It's like a lot of people you leave there. Some people you think you have a beef with or you wouldn't get along with, but it could have been the crap you were going through while you were there. You know, yeah. you're, you you could have been at home, and maybe some guy liked you and he was going to ask you out, and your parents said, "Don't ever get another C again. You're horrible. You'll never be anything." Walk out the door. <laughs> yeah. You know, you've got a C in Hakeem's class. Don't ever come home. God, my parents didn't say that. I know. I'm just saying. It could, somebody else. Could be yeah. yeah. Hypothetically. Yeah. <laughs> my parents are happy if I got a C. <laughs> well, that's how. But it didn't, you know, I think you learned irregardless whether you get the whole school or not because of the culture, the different people. You got intel, you got a conversation with a worldly group of people. It's not because you did perfect in every class because I didn't. I didn't do homework didn't. from seventh to twelfth grade, by the yeah. way. Yeah. You know, it's like, it doesn't mean I'm stupid. Yeah. I can yeah. obviously operate a computer. But my, yeah. my, th my thing is, is that being around the people, the culture, the learning and getting ideas. It's, you would not get all those ideas if you just lived in one little town in some little no. Midwest state or something. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So I, good. You're yeah. Something? It's uh, yeah. I was going to say, I think the way we all grew up, it just made us, I think more appreciative of the friends we have. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. I'm very, yeah. very picky about my friends. I mean, I still got only a handful from high school and, but like, you know, the ones I have as an adult, there's still only a small handful that I consider truly friends, but I can talk to anybody. Well, you learn that. You learn the rapport building skills of greeting the stranger, the new kid in town, you know, Absolutely. or being the new kid in town, or like you did in Greece, they learn how to hustle the food land managers, which is exactly. good, you know, and these are And that got skills. me into sales. Now I'm in sales. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in sales too. How many sales people did we have? I mean, you see all these people are realtors, Teddy Spill. Yep. And uh, there's just so many realtors in, you know, VHS. I used to do it. So, yeah. you know, sales is what we were all natural at because we had to carry our rap, our game. We're going to meet somebody. We're going to lay out our story and make them interested and intrigue them. Quickly. Yeah. Cause we, yeah. <laughs> but we're going to take them on, to, on a little mental journey because their story is like, I like pants. I really like some pants. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember when Barbara and I were kids, when uh, after not seeing each other for 12 years, and she found me, and I immediately drove to Florida to go visit her. I was so excited. And we sit down to dinner, and her family is there, her mom or dad, you know, and I have kids at that time. She had Kristen at that time. And we're sitting there eating and they hand me bread. And you know exactly what I'm gonna say. And they're all watching me. And I'm like, I'm trying to be polite still, you know, I hadn't seen her in a long time and her family. And I'm like, pull the bread apart, you know, in half. And they are all staring at me. And I'm like, what's your problem? You know? And they said, you're not gonna eat just the middle? Because what I used to do at Barbara's house is I used to go to her house. Her mom would buy fresh bread every day. Hard shell. And, and I, yeah, hard shell. And I would cut a hole, a little hole. And with my pinky, I'd scoop out the inside <laughs> and then put the piece back so it looked like it had put been it back in the bread <laughs> basket. <laughs> oh my God. That's and I would do it to all four of the rolls. <laughs> they were telling stories. You got to see this girl. She's a middle bread eating son of a gun. Can't wait to show you. And you're like, you like, didn't fall for it. I've, I've yeah. hung out. I've hung out with Mark Parkins. I've hung out with Kevin Merritt, you know, since then. Oh, wow. We, we met each other in around 12, 13 years old and hung out with each other quite a bit. Um, you know, Kevin came in and out because me and Mark didn't have a lot of girlfriends. So he'd be with a girlfriend being like married in high school for a while. And we would be, you know, not making funny of Kevin. But you know what I mean? It's like me and Mark are like, let's go to a disco and break dance and then get in a fight and then drink. You know, it was stupid stuff that we would look to get into. <laughs> let's ride our mopeds to Padova. You know, it's just yeah. th things that you would do and always test each other. I bet you won't dive in that river. I mean, it was always like that. And, you know, we've stayed in touch. Kevin went to the Air Force. Mark's in Texas. You know, he does property management stuff. And, you know, we've seen each other at the ups and downs of each other's life whether 
he's going through divorce or I'm going through divorce or he's going through a tough thing and I'm going through a tough yeah. thing. And nothing has been the perfect Facebook picture. I could just take my good pictures and pretend I'm perfect. But yeah. everybody's dealt with some bullshit. They've dealt with some, we've gotten older. We, we've lost loved ones. Time has passed us, whether it be, yep. you know, family, you know, relatives and all this, but we're still here and we're still here. And that's why oh, I yeah. made the show because we can't really go back to the base and have the same experience unless we went all back no. and took it over. And, took and it, it would be different. I was there as an adult because my daughter went to VHS. Kristen went to VHS. I was there as an adult and it was just totally different. I mean. Explain it. Tell me. Different. It was just, it, it was just crazy. I mean, the, you know, the teen club wasn't there anymore. The post had changed around. The school had changed. I mean, I used to walk, when I registered Kristen for school, um, walked into the front office and Miss Frigo saw me. She's like, she immediately recognized me. And then she called Mr. Zabork and he comes up and he recognized me. And I'm like, well, this is Kristen. And this is mine and Mike's daughter. <laughs> oh, wow. So, really? So she went there. So she couldn't get away with anything. Because like, we knew your mom and we knew your dad. So we know what you're going to do. We're gonna <laughs> <start right there. laughs> how, how, long were, how long were you there in Vicenza? Um, the last time we went back, I went back, I was there from 2002 to 2006. Good long run. Yeah, you know? she, she 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 graduated in 2007, so she didn't get to graduate from Vicenza, but she was a uh, she spent her first three years of high school there. Well, that's nice. She get so now you can talk to her, and you guys are on the same wavelength. It's such a different thing. Yeah, but they it. weren't as close, you know. When Kristen <laughs> yeah. went, people didn't get as close. I mean, no. do you, you're not agree, Barbara. I mean, people were not. Yeah, as their kids, their kids did totally different things. You know, I was, you know. I remember going, when we went to high school, I would sign my own absentee notes. They never knew what my mom's signature was. I mean, like, seriously. Um, I, you know, everything. I just, just, we could get away with all kinds of things. And my daughter couldn't get away with nothing. Mm -hmm. I was they had a GPS there. tracking chip in her? I was on <laughs> it. Like, like I tell, I was like, I'm on it like a fat lady on a pork chop. You ain't getting away with nothing. <laughs> wow, poor thing had to live down mom's extravaganzas. That's all right. Good. You and know, that's what she said. She goes, because of the shit you and dad did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what did you like about being back? What was familiar? Like maybe you only got 10% or 20% of what you used to um, get out of it. What did you like? So when I went back, it was weird. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I first got there and I had, you know, I'm married and I have my two kids and the first place I wanted to go was the bus stop. That was the first place I wanted to go. After I'd gone on post and seen post, I wanted yeah. to go to the bus stop in Bellagio. And I sat there and actually I started crying. Wow. Because I missed all everybody and all the fun that we had. And I knew it wasn't going to be the same. Yeah. You know. And but, it wasn't. I lived in Village and we went, we started off living in um, Cavazale, um when I moved back there as an adult and then we moved on post and uh, it was just all the buildings were, all the houses had changed, had been renovated, you know, and all this stuff. And it was just different. Even, I mean, my, my daughter enjoyed living in Village. She did the same thing we did, run around all the time to like midnight or whatever, but the buses weren't running like they were. Um, you remember how it used to be that back path to go out of a lodge through the cornfield? They locked it off. They locked it off. I saw that on a Google yeah. map. Yeah. yeah. Um, Did they really? Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. I, I, well, I was, that was that was still I open know. when I was there, but what that year was were you? pre 9 11. What year were you there, Cindy? Um, I was there 95. Uh, I think it was 95 to 98 or 99, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so by the that, time I got there, it was blocked off. I mean, they would allow, I walked back there several times. Um, farmers back there weren't ready. So I would be like, hey, you know, this used to be open. And like, yeah, well, we closed it because of, you know, whatever. Um, yeah. But they shoot me with salt rock like they did back in the day. <laughs> I love that back. I love that back walk to the Village. You're usually semi inebriated or going to a friend's yeah. house to get some food or whatever you were doing going back there. And yeah. then I'd use it as another way. I'd go the long way on my moped. I'd go when I'd work as a lifeguard at the Villaggio pool, which I love. Oh, yeah. 
Those were good times. I love the pool parties I used to throw when I close it down at night with everybody else. I was about else. to say, was it during open hours or after hours? After, after open hours. Sometimes <laughs> during, perhaps, maybe. <laughs> I would, you know, when I was 15, I think I said on another cast, but I would get the, you know, NCOIC's hat, the sergeant in charge, yeah. the mission officer in charge hat, and I'd put it on, and I'd put on Ray-Bans, and I didn't have any beard or nothing. I looked like a baby, baby face. But I'd <laughs> walk in with these Ray-Bans and, you know, Walk in there, kind of get in there with my shades. How you doing? Hey, I need some full packs. <laughs> yeah, me and the boys. Couple of drinks after work, thanks. And just walk out of there, and then go back to my normal high pitched voice. But <laughs> it's just the lady's like, "Oh, you're very cool. You know, sweet Italian lady. Are you? Oh, oh, nice to meet yeah. you, Sergeant." I'm like, "Yeah, that's right." And we just walk out of there. But those were good times. And then after a good lifeguard party. You know, you go and people are, you, you get to know some of the adults when I get older, like I was 18 or 19, they're like, yeah, come over. So behind all the houses in Villaggio, you have people from, that married men or women from different parts of the world and they bring different cuisine. So you're going one yeah. house, you're eating Thai food, next house you're eating some Louisiana food and you just bounce to all the barbecues like behind yep. the houses, the two-story ones, you know, more enlisted side. Yeah. Right? And that was great. I'm like, wow, it's great. Different drinks. I was just like, staggering at the end of the, getting it through the row of the houses i just love exactly that. by the time you're done one row you've eaten six different countries and had at least 12 different drinks yes well you know that barbara was... was like the caretaker for a lot of people there in Villaggio. come over she was like the, the was. nurse of Villaggio, i think in a way right yeah well there's my, my, my mom <coughs> still tell stories as a matter of fact like a month ago they was telling a story that uh they would um talk about Villaggio and cindy as a matter of fact and Dennis about how they would come in at nighttime and just, you know, my parents normally would already be in bed by the time I'd get in like 11, 1130, because we never stayed out super, super late. Because again, the curfew thing. And uh, um, I'd go in the house and all of a sudden they'd get up the next morning and they're like, you know, coming to check, make sure everything's okay. And there's me and then there's like two other heads in my bed and they're like, and they're pulling it down. Well, there's Cindy and there's Cindy's sister. Then they go in my sister's room, and my sister's got her head on her pillow. Then there's a head at the foot of the bed, and it's dense. <laughs> and, she, and they're like, what? They're like, well, you said we all had to come in. We just didn't know you didn't mean your house. We just all came into your house. Oh my no, the, the best was when I got, when we, her mother would put us on restriction. She didn't just put barbara and kella on restriction she would put the whole neighborhood on restriction and we would literally have to get off the bus i would get off the bus go to my house tell my mom i was there because my mom didn't know i was on restriction by Mar barbara's mom <laughs> so I'd tell my mom that i was home and i was going to barbara's i'd have to go to barbara's and do whatever her mother said because i was on restriction <laughs> I'm trying to get the years. Did you guys leave 86, 87? You were saying you were still there. Um, I, I didn't leave to 1990. I was there in 83 and didn't leave till 90. And, and you, Cindy? Away. I left, um, well, which time do you want? Let's see, the <laughs> high school. The high school high version, school. not the adult version. High school, oh. high school, I was there the summer of 81 and left um, 85, the summer of 85. Wow. So 85, you left, and it was our senior year. Yeah, um, I left on my, my senior tried year. To convince her mom and dad to leave her there with us. <laughs> and they wouldn't. They wouldn't. Did, yeah. you get, did you check out that Lake Marola party I think I sent you, Barbara? I did. I think you were at that one. I don't know if I was at that one, because I know in 85, we had our senior party at Lake that, Marola. You did too, 85? 85 and we burned everything all the boats everything yeah i was at that one finicky, i think but I think and i thought they I'm weren't gonna sure have it were. there anymore because exactly. of that. i wasn't there because barry Pinicky was our class president and he's you know put kind of his name out for everything and then <laughs> mysteriously had to leave the country not long after <laughs> barry Pinicky, very squared away solid <laughs> citizen we're finding something, a shadow of your past. <laughs> but that's not the point of the show, right? No, but, but, yeah, it, but it's, so, you know, it well, he was very presidential. I didn't let anyone do anything anymore. Oh, my goodness. Well, it wasn't, he couldn't control everybody, you know? No, and then that's what it, that's what it was. Right. 
but back then they had to blame somebody and because he was a class president. No, he didn't deserve that. I was in Boy Scouts with Barry Pinnicky. He was going to come visit me when he comes out. He's a pilot now. But he was yeah, like, he I was like, Atlanta, to, didn't he? yeah, he would keep the bullies away when I was tiny. So he was great. He was always so he tall was a and everything. Good guy. Yeah, he was not an ass to anybody. He didn't try oh, to make anyone feel bad. Absolutely not. Right? Uh-uh. You know, and he had his sister. Um, I don't remember his sister. I, 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 I'm going to remember her name because Cinnamon. Okay. Cinnamon. Good luck. Cinnamon Pinnicky. <laughs> remember her name. Yeah, she was a little younger. But who else do you guys remember from Vladja? Who else was your hangouts? Uh, Mark Rivera, Fred Pua Tua. Uh, and, and, and uh, Charlie Duffy. Do you remember Roger Mays? And, the names yes. are familiar. Yeah. yeah. I, I, he yeah. Lived I remember you guys Calgar. Did. Vicky Calgar. Uh, yeah. Christy kind of, Clegg. Well, but she didn't live in Vladja, though. But she uh, would uh, end up with oh, us a lot um, of times. Rossi, Dave Rossi. Oh yeah, he's uh, he's so, got, he's out Celine. here. And what was his sister name? Kathleen. Hey. Kathleen and Celine, Mike's old girlfriend. Remember? <laughs> I can. Some of us can forget those. Thanks, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> We're not holding on to the past. No, but 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 no, I remember them. I know you're talking. I'm just about gonna them. remind you of that one. Oh yeah. man. This is the most wild podcast so far because it's weird. Imagine no, that. This is the, the hard hitting. I mean, come on, the three mischievous kids that are pretending to be grown up. It's just only, a little bit. Right, <laughs> right. I'm trying to, you know, this is who our inner person owner is. And if our kids find it, they're going to like, I don't trust you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you get my yeah, point. I told right? my kids I, I was know, doing a podcast kids. and they both said, oh, dear Jesus. <laughs> my kids, you know, when they would ask me what high school was like when I was a kid, I, you know, I always tell them to watch, you know, like Six and Candles, that party, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I would like to us, you know? Uh, that more just animal is perfect. <laughs> yeah, was, exactly. You think more animal <laughs> Yeah, animal more house. More fast times at High? Yeah, mixed with Caddyshack. And then, yeah. <laughs> but better, times two. Yeah, yeah, with Italians and mopeds and intermixed in it, yeah. Exactly. Can, it, do you all remember, I, I can't even think of what the movie was called. It was some dancing movie, but when we all got out, everybody started break dancing right there outside the movie theater. Yeah. Does it was anybody the break, remember what that movie was? It was an electric boogaloo. There's another one, uh, Breaking One. And it was very popular because I get into break dancing and I'm going to admit it as a 52-year-old man because <laughs> I'd be one of the few. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Actually, I used a lot of those moves later in, as a sailor, um, but not doing wow. the spinning so much. Yeah, because Did it worked. Because it worked. Because sailors didn't have any game. I mean, we didn't know what to say to girls. We're like, "Hey, just dance on you till you like me." I don't know. I guess you're on a boat for six months. That's right. We had a lot of testosterone coming off of our uh, hormones. But I, I think I think that the difference was is that you know you'd go to an Italian place and they're dancing something that's ten years behind. Because MTV wasn't there yet. Yeah. You go to an Italian disco and they're like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> just hopping around like little gophers. And you're yeah. like, and they're trying to do your cool moves and stuff. And they're like, wow, that's fascinating. But I do remember Mark Parkin spinning on his head with his long, long hair. And he Me looked too. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, he was spinning <laughs> on his head at the crazy club in Cavazzale, actually. And <laughs> the, the Italians are just like, what the hell is that? And we do that at ski slopes. It was insane. Yeah. But we just, something made you want to do it because it was American, I guess. Maybe we didn't know what yes. was our lane or not our lane because everything That's was right. everything. That's right. We made ass yeah. asses of ourselves is what you're trying to say. <laughs> well, and we the were, Italians would watch us too, thoroughly. Well, like if you grew up in a certain state, they, they, you probably wouldn't get as much diverse music. You would just tune into one thing. Like you live in the deep south. Oh, I like country. Have you ever heard of yeah. uh, the Gap Band? Or you ever heard of Rick James? Have you ever heard of exactly. Cameo or disco music or, you know, yeah. whatever, 38 Special? You wouldn't know these things because we had everybody bring every music. So yeah. we liked everything that was American. I'm going to be a breakdancing roller disco guy that really likes uh, Led Zeppelin. I mean, <laughs> you walk out of there really yeah. confused, but you wanted to try it all because when you're there as long as me, from 72 to 87, you know, I'd go back to the States every couple of years. You wanted anything that was American. Hell, you wanted commercials 
on the bootleg VHS tapes that you got to watch movies on. Like, yeah. oh, what's Kellogg's new cereal? I mean, stupid. Yes. You know, you crave yep. Americana, right? Um, little did we know, now we're here like older going, man, I wish I could have some, uh, you know, margarita pizza made in a fire grill, you know, whatever. Exactly. Oh, and only three channels on the TV. Um, oh, God. God. Yeah. That's how a lot of I people learn Italian. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Say again, Cindy? You know, I I, I would give anything to ha eat that oh, food wait, again. Eat oh, my food, God. I missed that food. Again? Oh. She said food. Okay. Food, yeah. <laughs> it, dude. Food, oh. food, <laughs> anything. Bigly <laughs> anitra. I have I you know, I miss them. <laughs> Well, I miss that, you know. You well, make I made food? myself. I got guys... that from Barb. I mm -hmm. do, but I got it from Barb. And uh, the last time I was there, I learned quite a bit from my neighbor too. Um, but yeah, Barb and her mother taught me a lot. Thank I, God. But knew... still, it's not quite the same. Um, no. I, I know Barb could cook for some reason. I never, I never went over there for dinner, but I knew that you could because it was like we're going to Barb. She can cook. I remember that. Yeah, I didn't do the cooking. My mother did, but she didn't. No, yeah. her mother could cook. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what it was? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I remember, you know, either hungry boys were trying to go eat some food or they're trying out on the dating show, maybe play a banjo or sing a song to her. Right <laughs> I have no idea what happened at Barb's house. But I didn't guys, know what happened at Barb's house half the time. All the guys were grabbing by, hey, Barb. And like, I'd see two or three of them like car wrecks. I'm like, man. You know, if you could label stalkers, I'm kidding. There would be <laughs> times I came home and there's people in my house. I'm like, why are they here? And who the hell are they? They're waiting on you. <laughs> they're, they're, like, they're your friends. I'm like, I don't know them. <laughs> it, it, it could have been so like those guys from Night at the Roxbury. What's up? What's up? You know, <laughs> just sitting on your couch. Really? What's up? And you're like, nothing. Who are you? Yeah, I could get that. We're, um. Yeah. Did you guys travel much when you went back the second time, when you went back there when you were married? Oh, yeah. I made sure that um, because Kristen was 10 years old when I moved back there, because um, both of my kids were born to Vicenza. Um, so I made sure that when she was there, that she got to go around and we, I took her to Naples and to Florence and to Venice and all the places in Vicenza that her and her, her and her, uh, me and her dad went to and... Um, I mean, his family, his mom still lives there. Mike's mom and sister still lives there. So, you um, know, we still keep in contact with them, you know, because. How's his brother? I haven't heard from him. Do what? How's his brother doing? I haven't even. Stevie, um, well, he's had good days and bad days. He's in Texas. Oh, okay. He did the Air Force for a while. I think he, I don't know if he retired from the Air Force. I think he, he just, he cut, he cut a little short from retiring from the Air Force. But okay. Texas, so. Married with two kids. Well, it's a standard. Yeah, of course I traveled, you know. I, I When I lived there, yeah, I went all over trying to yeah. show everybody, you know, the same things that I went through. But my kids were smaller when I went there, you know. Uh, yeah. My son was, when we got there, was only starting first grade. And uh, my daughter was only two, and I put her in a Zillow. Oh, cool. Uh, when, I, I remember that. When I got there. What's funny is I moved to, when I got there as an adult, I live, lived in Costa Bisada. And I remember as a kid, uh, nobody lived there as a kid, when I was a kid. Uh, as a matter of fact, that was kind of like a band area because it was more communist area. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they opened it up and we moved there, you could go anywhere in that town and ask where the American lived and everybody knew where I lived. <laughs> wow. Well, the red hair had nothing to do with it. Yeah, La Testarossa. <laughs> <It's how> and, <laughs> Don't worry, La Testarossa. Yeah, right. <laughs> you got lost. Everybody knew in that town, where's the American? They could point right to my house. <laughs> you, you, guys, you guys were born and bred into the military pretty much. I mean, were you guys yeah. little tiny children when your parents were, when you were born? Were they military yeah. people? Uh, yeah, yeah. My, my dad had just joined the military when my parents had me, yeah. Same with you, Cindy, pretty much? Um, we all, as a matter of fact, yes, my dad was in the army and, and uh, uh, when I was born, 
we, my mother had me in Maryland, but we were only there for six days and then moved to Georgia. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's yeah. the military life though. I mean, I don't know if you guys still feel it. Like, you know, my wife wants to move to Spain, you know, she loves to yeah. travel. She set me up yeah. like, let's go to North Carolina. Let's me I'll get a job there. I'm like, huh? You know, we live in California. Beautiful, beautifully expensive yeah. as well. Beautifully yeah. whipping your ass at the gas pump and the mortgage payment. You know what I mean? And the food tax and the cigarette yeah. tax. You know, I mean, that's gas that. tax. Gas tax. Yeah, they get some taxes out here, man. Uh, yeah. But but I'm not I'm not because I'm not highly in debt or suffering anything, so I'm okay. But still, you know, you could live better. So it's I'm curious. I've never lived there. Have you, either of you two lived in Carolina because of being married of military guys. Yeah, and... I lived in Fort, in Fort Bragg. My friend said he loved it. Did you like it over there? Nope. No, why not? <laughs> I just, the town is just, it's a typical, what I call a typical, like Columbus, Georgia is a typical military town. So you get out, of, you drive out of the front gates of post and you get nothing but strip clubs and tattoo parlors. Tattoos, strippers, and beer, yeah. That's it. Well, that's any place, not, post, though. But not right really up. easy to, to raise a child. I know when we lived at Fort Campbell, <coughs> they, oh, yeah. uh, I was driving out front of post, and my son is just, my Hunter was four, four or five years old, and he's just learning how to read, and he's reading these signs saying strippers and titty bar, and he's reading these, and I, in the car, mm -hmm. I'm almost having accidents. Thinking, where is he getting this from? And not realize it's huge billboards, you know. You're going, damn, you can read, son. You can read. And no. I think, <laughs> this is not what we should be reading. <laughs> He's a reader. I'm going to tell every. Oh, wait, you didn't notice what he was reading. I'm joking, but he hit my voice. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. So, I mean, that's the only thing I don't like about mil but typical military towns. And I'm not thinking, I don't think all of them are like that. Hmm, Vicenza had the Arca Boleno at the front gate. It did. Right? And if you and don't know what it is, then you don't know. Back. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was their only attempt and everything else was pretty normal. But, you know, you had yeah. some little cafes, but they weren't like Archibaldino cafes. Uh, no. Not at all. It wasn't like uh, Johnny's and September's, you know, which is now yeah. a jar place, right? Which those were specific military bars. We spent a lot of time at those two places. I spent a lot <laughs> of time at Johnny's, a lot of time. No, Johnny's had the good late night beer munchy food, you know? They were yeah. good with that. Um, but no, just seeing a military base, I guess, I guess I'm not going to live by a base anytime soon ever. Um, I can still go on them, but I yeah. get what you're talking about in the Navy. I mean, if you went to Alameda, it looked like something out of like a mad magazine or national lampoon kind of wild nightlife for a prowling sailor kind of place. Like Johnny B. Goods is the bar and dragon palace <laughs> and bars like this all down the street. And it was just like, come here and get lit, sailor. You know, and yeah. what, what was Spend different? Spend your money here. What was different, though, is we didn't just have, you know, sailors, you get to live by the beach, but sometimes they'd put you in really screwed up areas, like a real bad neighborhood. So you'd be walking through, uh, like, Hunter's Point, and all of a sudden, sailors are hooked on crack. Because they hey, want some crack? Oh, uh, okay, I never tried it. You know, <laughs> and they'd have crack <laughs> heads, you know what I mean? You know, uh, stuff like that, or, you know, just the bars and then you know the girls that waited for you at the bars were like oh it's like you worked at google and i'm gonna marry him it was like that like we were the main industry out here for a while a lot of people made some bad bad choices myself included uh but i will say that being at, you know the navy bar just like the army place it's just a raunchy like porky's the movie think yeah. of porky's like that place yeah. that porky's has yeah it's porky's outside the post he's waiting there you know, yeah. you're going to get in trouble too, more than likely, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, no doubt. Well, I mean, what do you, are you guys ever planning on going back or going to Europe or to see other parts of the world? Do you have that bug still? Oh, yeah. Of course. I, I want to move every three years. I'm waiting for papers to come in the mail. Yeah. Right. Not yeah. that I want to move because now I got to do it on my own. But I still have furniture with the little damn moving tags on them that I <laughs> take off. Because when I see it, it, makes, it brings a smile to my face. Yeah. That's funny, though. I still have some, too. I do the same thing. <laughs> no, you're, 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 you're like a rock band that's always going on a tour. You know, think about it. <laughs> yeah. 
And even you if know, you live in Vicenza, you want to move somewhere too, just to mix it up a little bit, maybe come back yeah. after another tour, right? Yeah. 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 You know, that was one thing that was so great about living there is, uh, you know, everybody moving all the time, you know, it wasn't such a big deal. Uh, you made friends fast, yeah. you know, yeah. and it didn't matter. You know, one night you might be with one crowd and the next night you might be with another crowd. You know, everybody got along pretty well, I thought, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, well, it's different crowds. Like sometimes they would merge. I mean, sometimes it's like the barber crews hanging out with the officer's kids crew, you know, and then they would yeah. depart and they'd yeah. intermingle and then some of them were dating and then they weren't. And it, it was yeah. like we, we had clicks, but we also had um a place where we'd all have such a big party that everybody was friends that night yeah and, and then there'd be, there'd, there'd be the little clicks like this is just us you know we'd all meet at thing. september's right. you know, yeah. doing the jungle hunt yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly well that you're tell We're me more the at those picnic tables i want i want to put add this in and you guys are welcome to come back onto other podcasts and mix it up with other people too but i want to mix in the part let's talk about this grease trip again you have pictures from it did you have there in your hand I oh do. God. Let's see these. Oh, God. <laughs> Hold on. As long as it's not burning the thong, I'm okay with you showing these. No, no. no. You know what happened to us? While we're, this is pretty funny. So we are one night in a hotel, right? They actually, on the base of Oraculon, they had a curfew. And their curfew was 10 o'clock. Yep. Well, when we got there, we kept, you know, going beyond the 10 o'clock curfew. And they were getting mad. So whoever was in charge up the curfew to midnight. And if we were going to be out later, we were allowed to be out later, but we had to call the SP desk and let them know that we were going to be out later. But anyways, so the first night or first or second night that we're there, we go to the beach. <laughs> we go skinny dipping by a couple of us and we're out there swimming having a great old time you know we uh the sps actually came by told us that we couldn't be there we put back on our clothes we went back to the hotel the next morning we're in the elevator and Vern is informing barbara and i that those towers have soldiers in them <laughs> with night vision goggles <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's, yeah. that's fun. I, I know the beach you speak of because I went there and get into some mischief on a long teen club trip. And I had, uh, they were looking for me for something. I got you in trouble. Don't say. No, no, the MPs were like, I saw them circling the base. I'm sitting down, you know, how the base goes down and you're at the beach. You go down yeah. the hill. Yeah. And at the bottom is the sand and the beach. You can look up the hill yes. at the base. And I'm watching the MP cars or SP cars going, looking around for me and Mark. And we're just drinking this huge uh, cooler, like Pullman coolers that I had uh, with a bottle of gin and like other, you know, mixer. And we're going, look at them. They're looking for us. How silly. They don't even feel like running because they don't even know where we are. Look at them going in circles. This is entertaining. We're just drinking, watching them go in circles. And nobody ever ended up apprehending us for whatever. And we didn't rob anything or anything like that. But maybe we told someone to screw off or I don't know what it was. But yeah. uh, we were watching them go in circles and we're just laughing like, and what's this all about? You know, it's like, yeah. somebody's missing. Len Dempsey and Mark Parkins is missing. We're like, yeah, we're over here, dude, at the beach. We're not missing, we're hiding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I had a great time when, on the Greece trip when we went off the base to a formal Greek, you know, dinner and the food. And we did dancing, too. Right? Yeah. But I snuck away and I found an ouzo bar with a really serious ouzo that's probably made with who knows what, poppy flowers? <laughs> Anyways, I'm talking to these people and I thought I could speak Greek and they thought I could speak Greek. And we're talking Greek to each other. Easy, like, so. that's it was good German, easy. Italian, French, and English all mixed up. Oh, and, I remember those. Uh, great time. And the more you drank, the better you spoke. <laughs> yeah, or they're just probably yeah. like, yes, yes, very much, yes. What are you saying, yes. But it could have been like that. And I had a great time there. It was just out in the countryside. That was, it was wonderful. Um, Let me see. I found. I took one picture. Let's see if I can figure out how to do this. I don't know if I can, you guys can see it. Oh, cool. Can okay. You see it? A little bit. I'm trying to, huh? I don't oh, know how to get it to show better. You know what? That's. Uh, 
That's a cool picture, though. You know what you can do is if you, could, if you could scan it or take a picture with your phone, like somewhere where there's no light reflected on it. Yeah. Then I'll post it up with the video. Like I'll put it. I'll up. do that. Sometimes I, there's a couple of those. Sometimes I screen share like I was sharing uh, the Lake Marola video with Fred Poo to it jumping up and down the other yeah. day. They're like, whoa. And, that was you know, crazy. Oh, yeah. I've, I've talked to him a lot. I haven't talked to him in a while. Um, it's, it's all where we are in our lives. Like if you call me and I'm going through a divorce or uh, yeah. any, anything bad in my life, I might be like, I'll never do a podcast. And I'm not saying he is, but I'm saying yeah. there's a lot of people that will show up for this. Yeah. But also I said to somebody, I'm not going to say who you know you are. Yeah. Uh, I said to him, he's like, like uh, you know, now let me think about it. I go, what's there to think about? It's only been 35 years. Well, how much more time you got left on this planet? Right. You know, yeah. and, and that's, yeah. the, that's the truth, right? Yeah. You know, it but is. I will tell you one thing that I. I that well, when you messaged me. Oh, go ahead, Barb. I was going to say, my daughter, Kristen, um, who's Mike's daughter, mine and Mike's daughter, she thinks it'd be cool if you did a podcast with maybe some of the friends that, so she could hear some of the stories they have about her dad. I'm going to. Totally planned. She would love to be able to be, to watch that and hear and ask questions because she hasn't had that. I mean, she gets what I say and, you know, what his sister says and some of the, like Cindy or, you know, but yeah. I love to hear from um, other people that he went to school with. Are you talking like, uh, Kenny and Eric and uh, you know, Mark, Mark and Mark. Yeah. yeah, we can get Mark Charlie yeah. on it. You know anyone who knew even before I got there, who if they knew Mike, because Mike was there way before I got there. I I knew him. I'll give you a good yeah. Mike story. You know. I know. So one time in band camp, no, that's not how it went down. I was not in <laughs> band camp. <laughs> no, no. In band camp. No. Uh, so one time in band camp, no, not at all. No, I took a good summer trip. Um, with with uh, Mark Rivera and Mike and Kenny, and uh, we went down to Livorno during like our we had our summer hire money, and I think Mark was dating some girl down there, who was like being our host, being like our version of Barbara down there for Livorno, so <laughs> she was hooking us up like you know, and we would go by the American Beach. You guys ever been down there in Livorno, the American Beach? I have. Yeah. So if you go in, you go to the left through the sticker bushes and all that, there's dunes. And we'd go through there and we'd hide and we'd camp out in bonfire all night. And the cops could not see you and the, and the beach patrol could not see you. And we would have raging parties and we stayed, we camped on the base. And I, and I think Ralph was with us too. Yeah, Ralph was with us. And I, it was just like every night, every night crazy stuff would happen. I mean, I guess I could tell a bad story about myself to get the story going. Uh, so there I was in these leather pants. No, I'm joking. <laughs> bad story. Well, there goes the bad we story. We all have them. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but this was funny because, uh, you know, I think I was closer to 18 or 17 at the time. And we were playing quarters against the kids of Livorno, right? So, we're, and we were playing it with Jose Cuervo, not beer. Oh, and, you know, we got totally, totally out of it. I didn't really recall much of what was going on. And I'd went off and had a cigarette or something off in the, you know, there was like these little forests, like there'd be a forest before you walked into the sand, right? And uh -huh. there I was, and I'm like, okay, uh, I'm going to go back to the bar. And I think Mike was there and Kenny was there and, or, or not Kenny, I'm not sure exactly, Mark Rivera. And I'm like, and I'd tell him and I, and I see this girl that I like, I go, and I think I'm really cool, but I'm, I'm pretty buzzed. And I go, hey, man. And I was trying to yell, that girl's looking at me over there. I think she likes me. I'm like, <laughs> she hears me. I'm like, in the whole bar. You know, hey, <laughs> hey now. You know, it's like, <laughs> and, and I thought I was cooler than I was under the influence. So I walked over to her and she's with these two little college guys. And they're like, she doesn't want to talk to you. I go, oh, well, I don't care what you say. I want to talk to her. You want to talk to me? Yes. No, you do. It's like, have a seat. So I go to sit down. And there's no chair, so I sit on the air and just fall on my ass and just laying there on my back, <laughs> laying on my back, staring at the ceiling, hearing like some music off the jukebox, and I can't move. And the next thing you know, my little top cider shoes are being thrown at me by Mark Rivera. Oh or, Lord, I remember or, you, were you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, Mike, Mark Rivera throwing those things at me, and they're hitting me in the head, and I go, "What the hell?" 
And I just, and I, and, then, and they're going cops. I go, Oh, cops. I just felt guilty all the time. I didn't do anything. So I go, the cops are coming. And I grabbed my boom box that was there. And I just ran through the forest, like into the trees. Well, while that was going on, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, the monster of Florence, the monstro di Firenze, you know, like the Hannibal Lecter part two, that's based on a real guy or guy. Yeah. Or whatever, yeah. Right. Um, that was going on, like there was threats of warnings, like, like don't go into the parks at night, the, the disco stranglers out there, whatever. So I see this couple making out in the woods and I run up on them and I, you know, go boo. And they're like, ah, they ran away. And I just crashed out on the bench, you know, and uh, I didn't know them. And I wake up and I don't know what time it is. And I hear ah, just weird stuff in the woods. I go, oh, crap. What is this? I just turn up my music and I'm pointing it everywhere in the direction of this dark woods with no lights. And I'm on this park bench and I notice I have no shoes and I run down to the, uh, down to the clock, you know, those clocks they'd have by the bus stops. And what time is it? It's like three 30. I go, Oh crap. Mark's gone. Mike's gone. Everybody's gone. You know, Ralph's gone. So I run and there's this like five mile road of pitch blackness that runs down the side that goes back to the base. So I'm just walking with no shoes on, stepping on pine needles, whatever in my jeans, like, Whoa, just out of it. And I hitchhike, and this guy in one of those like Citroens, you know, those weird funky ones. The, the I, we used to have yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, those those Archie and Jughead cars they'd have in the yeah. comic book. Yes. Yeah, this guy with a Fu Manchu beard is looking at me strange. And I'm like, what's up? Now, so he gives me a ride. <laughs> I get to the front base, and I get to the front base, and the MP sitting there with his rifle passed out in the chair. So I crank up some White Snake or something, just blast it at him. He's like, ah! He just jumps to attention. I go dismiss this kid and I show my ID and I walk into the campground but I don't walk because I'm hammered and I'm running over people's tents that are people are sleeping in you know those pup tents oh my gosh. And right through the middle oh sorry people I'm laying on top of them I'm getting up <laughs> uh, and I wake up my clothes are inside out I'm covered in pine needles and um you know and, and I think that you know I, I'm you know, Mark's messing with me, Mark Rivera, Mike, whatever. And there's supposed to be some van to pick me up. And they tied me to a bench with some women's bathing suits that they found. And I'm like, <laughs> have one across my <laughs> face. My face. I, I couldn't, I was so hungover. I could not fight. I'm like, oh, stop. Ah. I had no will to push them off. So I'm tied to this bench and the band shows up and they're like, hey, hey. I'm like, Mrr! and they untied me and I, and I and I went back to Vicenza. But that was with Mike and Mark and them. And that was just one fragment of that. More will come back to me. But oh my gosh. I knew Mike for years. I mean, me and him and Kenny would hang out sometimes. Yeah. And Mark Rivera. And we'd all be all at the same parties. Oh, yeah. Partying at his house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then his brother, he was out there too, Stevie. Yeah. Yep. So I went out to their house maybe once or twice, not too much, but I know that we hung out like on the town a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's hard to know your dad. Like, who was he? I'm talking about your dad as a kid. He was one of the guys, you know. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't yeah. unpopular. He was a cool dude. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of friends. People liked him. That's the thing yeah. I could say if your daughter hears this. And yeah. he was there a and long time, like, how many years? He never airs, but yeah. How many years was, was Mikey there the whole time? Were they, like, they were kind of Italian American, right? He didn't. Well, he ended up dying. He we ended up graduating high school. We got engaged. We got married. We had Kristen, and then he passed. He had his accident when we were over there, mm -hmm. and that was in nineteen ninety. So that was ninety. That was quick. Yeah, I was in the military still when that happened. Yeah, that we were only married a little over three years before he oh, passed. Oh wow! And it's and it's tough for a kid to grow up without their dad. And it happens to a lot of military people for other reasons. Going in yeah. the field, yeah, being yeah, out yeah, in the yeah, war yeah. zone. I mean. Who's that guy? Yeah. They, you know, what's your relation? So yeah. yeah, for you to see this, your dad was a great guy and we had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, yes. And now I'm the old man telling the story at the picnic table, but I'm not old. <laughs> I'm really younger. She wants, she wants more of his friends to tell him the stories because she'd like to hear it before everyone, you know, forgets or, you yeah. know. Well, I'll ask anybody that hung out with him that comes on here to definitely mention that. I think that's, that's nice. I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. I think that's she good just, for you know, her. Oh, for sure. It'd be great for her to that hear. story was more about me, but he was there. <laughs> <laughs> I had to I, see who's going to tell on themselves like that. Like, no, I had straight A's. I was always cool. I looked really neat. People yeah, like that was 
That was Sydney not and I know crowd. better than that. <laughs> I have nothing to lose that was not here. Our crowd. <laughs> I mean, if you see if you see this video, some I'll be more formal, some I'll be more rock and roll. But yeah. I have nothing to lose here. Uh, fortunately for me, some people might, and I won't take them there because they might have some corporate job that's being scrutinized. Exactly. Yeah. And they're like, "Oh, Billy, I did not know you used to." you know, jump over walls naked in the back of Bellagio. I don't think you can work here anymore. I don't want that to happen. Oh, no. we went skinny dipping in the pool. Did, don't you have a scar, Cindy? I do. I have two scars from that, you know? <laughs> one on my nose, you know? And, and one, one on your arm. arm. My arm, yes. And I had to wear long sleeves to hide it from my parents. Yes, yes. The barbed Thank wire. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, well, because we went skinny dipping in the Bellagio pool the day before it was going to open. Yeah. And the numb nuts that Barbara used to babysit for that lived close to the pool called the Cabineries on us. How many, yeah. uh, how many of us were in there? There was a lot. I mean, there was about me, 10 of us. Dennis, me, oh. you, Dennis, I mean, there was a few others. Yeah. And we, we were butt ass naked. Jumping over okay? the pits. So when the Cabineries, Yes. So when the Cabinet showed up, we went to the backside trying to jump over the fence, climb up. And I, I just remember who was catching the clothes. Somebody was no, the there's no we didn't somebody throw was, the clothes. Well, we somebody was clothes. chucking clothes over. Well, I don't know because you know, the carbonary came up with the flashlight and looked at us and, and we're all naked. And he goes, Where's your ID card? And I'm like, Where would you like us to hide it? Naked. <laughs> You're like, uh, tutti nudi, ma cosa fai? <laughs> tutti I'm nudi, like, naked seriously? Americans. I'm like, they're all in there. And Barbara, and, and he wanted to write down our names. He wanted to write down our names. And Barbara was like, no, nope. no, no. You forget her name, his name, his, her name. <laughs> no, nope, none of our names. Or my mom's not giving you coffee in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're probably the thinking. Day, they were at her house. Yep. They were, the, they were there they for were coffee. At our house, and we thought they were telling on us. They weren't. Yes, we thought they were telling on us. <laughs> we gave them all kinds of looks. All kinds. You better, you better, don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't. Yep. They had Carbonieri Omerta, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it was. But that's, that's pretty cool. So I did not, you know, they probably went, man, why do Italian kids not do this stuff? <laughs> Why are the Italian kids at home watching Rai Due, watching a cartoon about a mouse? Crazy American, exactly. you know? crazy. Yeah. I, and listen, crazy if brought, Americans. If you brought some nice Italian kids over here, they would not be doing that here at our pool. It's only the Americans no. going there, and it must be an American mindset, you know. Yeah. And and it's and it's also, you got SEB. Okay, you've watched enough commercials about be all you can be. Uh, you've yeah. watched Yan Can Cook who I was actually yes. going to do a podcast with. He used to come on to oh, really? the time there. Yeah, yeah. My friend's friends with him. Um, but it's like there was nothing else to do. And time was slower. And, and you were racing. Yeah. And you wanted some activity. Whether it be, yeah. let's do something mischievous. Who am I going to do something mischievous with? And it was about yeah. what you could get away with, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of times who you were hanging out with and with our ID card said. Because I know I got out of a lot of things because, you know, hanging out with Dave Rossi here or there. And then they come up and they show, like, okay, you're good to go. I'm like, great, I'm with him. <laughs> <laughs> that's my boyfriend. Even though I'm dating another guy, that's my boyfriend today, though. Exactly. <laughs> and then, and then yeah, Cindy's like, that's right my <laughs> Cindy, Cindy, I'm Cindy, with like, them. I'm with Cindy's them. like, I'm, I'm dating him, too. Yeah. It's a nice Mormon family. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice Mormon family. Yeah. I remember, you know, you guys mentioned the Tagada in one of the podcasts, that ride, the Tagada. Oh, oh yeah. yes. I, I remember one year we were, a bunch of us were on the ride and there was some Italians on it too. And the Italians were talking shit to us. And so we all came up with the plan that when it, I don't know, when it, it popped up the highest, yeah. we were going to grab hands and rushed them because they kept trying to come to the middle exactly. and we rushed them and flipped one of them out of the ride oh my goodness so after that 
of course, when the ride ended, there was going to be a big, huge fight. And we only had like four American guys with us. And uh, uh, the rest of us were females, I think it was. And so Barbara and I started running up and down the, uh, the carnival, yelling a fight, fight, Americans against Italians. And all of a sudden, <laughs> these GIs come out. And they're like, where? And we're like, down there at the Tagada, you know, and we pull everybody in. Huge <laughs> fight starts happening. And all of a sudden, the Cabineris come, lots of them. And I don't know where anybody went. Some GI grabbed my hand and said, let's get out of here. Good God, all we need is for your dad to know you're out here. Exactly. <laughs> How very Machiavellian of you two. Like you guys <laughs> like the hand in the Mafia movie. I get it. We were trying to help. <laughs> I've given you a chance to talk about your good grades, your favorite teachers, what kind of pants oh. you enjoyed. But here we are. And this is what it's about. This is you are who you are and I am who I am. Oh yeah. And there's I'm many shades of VHS yellow. I guess that's how yeah. it is. 50 yeah. shades of Vicenza. That's how it works. A Vicenza that's was on the surface perfect and under the surface a wild creepy disco yeah. place. It was you know. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect enough. I mean you woke up every day going what am I going to get into today right? Exactly. So how has that changed now that you're adults? How much of that do you still do? I mean, you guys still skinny dipping? You guys, you know, going no. to a lot of bars, doing any of that stuff? No, I don't do. I don't do skinny dipping anymore. Um, yeah. Um, well, if if we had the chance, I'm sure we would. If we, well, yeah. Uh, don't do the bar hopping. Um, bars here are not like they were, you know, back when you were 18, 17, 18. Yeah. Years. Um, so yeah, I guess the the it's Netflix. <laughs> Netflix, I think Tiger Cougars. King. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why I saw that, and I go, "What about the Cougars? We got the Tiger. What about the Cougar?" So we're yeah. here. So what do you? What At do you guys? The Cougars didn't kill anybody. Right. Who do you want to see on here? Like when you watch these, like what did you get from some of these? What are your like? You got the Tagada, you know. Yeah. It's like what sticks in your head. That's my question because different things are different people, right? And different people will take stuff out of this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like to see Bear on it. I'd like to see Dennis on it. Christy Clegg. Yeah. Christy Clegg would be fun. She went with us to the choir trip, the chorus trip to Brindisi. In Brindisi, yeah. The the trip from hell. Yeah. <laughs> we had a lot of those trips. Yeah, well, the trip from hell. It's funny that my trips all had Sydney in it. That should tell you what the factor. <laughs> <laughs> you no, guys are no. you guys I, I did not know i had the ying the yin yang twins over here i mean now I oh my god her and i <laughs> you know when we were a, growing up barbara would come up with the plan i would improve the plan there you that's go that's how it worked and then that's, blame me for it what it did yeah. out. You, you what are you talking about your mom put me on restriction yeah, oh, speaking wow. to my mom and dad, I talked to them before I touched them. They told me to tell you hi and they love you. <laughs> no. Tell them I love them too. I would. Wow. So you guys are planning on getting back together. You guys should just hang out. It's all COVID. You guys should just go hang out together. And like start right. a, sit a sitcom, you know? Just oh start it all God. over again. Right? Yeah. You know, you've done enough of this grown up stuff. Come on now. Yeah, I'm over the grown up shit. Let me tell you. Right. <laughs> Yeah, we need to go back to being stupid. <laughs> well, I mean, some 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 podcasts are formal. Some are, like I said, like this, and there will be more like this. Not I mean, wait, formal. Wait till I bring Mark Parkins on. You know what I oh, mean? Oh gosh, that'd yeah. be hilarious. Yeah, I think bring he Mark. was the elephant. Wasn't he the elephant? <laughs> he was always the elephant. <laughs> oh, in the drinking game? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the elephant. Sorry. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to get I'd like to get Mark Rivera. So I need you guys to peer pressure him. If you want oh, Dennis, the same, and the same with Dennis. I can know, do that too. You know, Ralph Schuberg is another one. Ralph Schuberg, definitely. I want to get him on here. Colin would be good. Troy would be great too. Actually, him and Jeanette, because they're back together now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, after 30 years. What about the she's, Duffy's? She's great. She's great. Yeah, the Duff, that's great. why I said Tony and Charlie Duffy would be good. Where are they now? Um, Tony is in Texas, and Charlie's in Arizona. Charlie's okay. New hip, so he's almost like a bionic man. Okay, so he can go back to speed jogging. That's fun. 
Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> my, 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 my dad had his hips replaced. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be careful with mine. So that's yeah, just the best yeah. way to look hey, at it. Hey, how's your mom? I worked with your mom. Did you really? Yeah. Over in, uh, over in Italy. A a for the colleges or whatever. ACS. Registrar. ACS, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's in Cape Cod, man. She's over by the beach, living the beach life. Wow. Yeah. Nice. But, you know, I see people, you know, going, their moods fluctuating. It's hard. I'm trying to keep everybody upbeat, just take you off what you know, because everything's fake news and bad news. And you could sit there and chug Facebook all day till you're like, mm, what was it, 151 proof of BS? And you then know, I exactly half, you know? it's not true. So, yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's where we are, right? So yeah, right? I'm making a reality show about the reality and then what we think we remember of it, right? Yeah. Um, so well, you need to keep doing this and then we all have a get a group there. Well, I'll do a group one. We can do those oh, on the weekend. That's the plan. Awesome. The question okay. is how, how hard will it be talking? Like, what is the perfect number? I did it with my sailor buddies. I think we're up to eight. And then one guy's holding court, blah, 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 blah. And there's like eight people sitting there going, hmm, <laughs> they're at their phones. And the, oh, yeah, yeah, Bill. You know, and we're like, that's, but I think yeah. groups of Or even four. just trying to do like the little clicks, like do the, yeah. the, you know, the clicks that were in Italy, just because those are about eight to 10, no more than that normally, right? Right, right. No, I, I, I think the Villaggio crew that you guys are, it'd be great to have you all reunioned, especially have a couple of you guys on individually or together like in, in groups of two yeah and yeah. then like like i did with derek and lisa and mike walkers i put them all on one together but mike couldn't make it that day so i just grabbed robert utterbach and yeah. uh you know but we have like i got rich collins out i've got um uh, mike petty you guys remember mike petty the guitar guy yeah. he's coming out and then uh who else no he's not that he's coming out he's coming out his episode's coming out yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, clarify that. yeah, I gotta watch my language, man. Fucking people on Twitter. <laughs> but but uh, I'm just saying, oh, like, fake news, Lynn. Yeah, fake news. And there you go again. <laughs> right? So there's him, and then there's another guy. My, I'm having my brother do these with his peer group. So yeah, we're going to have more content that we can release in a day. You won't we be able to watch it. We should get my sister. All. I don't know if my sister will be on your group or your brother's group. Either one's fine. Doesn't matter. We're mixing it up. You know, I did the, I had the Dingus brothers on yesterday, Eric and yeah. uh, uh, David. So they were, they were doing yeah. good. He I became a principal. With him. My senior prom, I went with Dave Dingus. Oh, really? Yeah, but just uh, because I, because Fred, Fred Poo and I had just broken up. I oh. went with Marcus Rosenthal. Oh, wow. We didn't have a date, so Dave and I just went as friends. Well, that's cool. That's really cordial of them. And her mother, her mother taped flasks to our legs. Yes, she did. Dresses. We had all kinds of vodka glass under our dresses. <laughs> you guys had it. You guys were getting away with more than me. I feel so innocent and virginal now that I've had this podcast. But we know crazy. better. <laughs> right. Yeah, to some degree, right? I'm like, eh, you know, did I do that? Maybe I did, but seeing it through your eyes, hearing it from you is what <laughs> I sound you, like to other people. You feel like you were an angel, right? After hearing us. <laughs> A little bit, but not too much. I mean, there you, go. But you I were right there. Of course I was, but I think everybody, everybody, um, they have their perception like our, my extreme, it was amazing. Yeah, it was a three foot fire. It wasn't a bonfire, Len. It all depends, yeah. right? Yeah. How, how we yeah. see ourselves. And then what, when yeah. you speak it to me, it sounds like a bonfire. You might like, that was normal. And then another guy's <laughs> like, oh my gosh, that was a forest fire. You know, exactly. the interpretation, yeah. right? The same thing. Yeah. But yeah, which ones have you, have you listened to so far? Who have you kind of tripped on? I got up to I've, the Goldstein so far. I haven't gone to the Goldstein. I haven't seen Dingus yet. I saw um, Lisa Rolick a little bit, and I saw some of the Derek Gold. Okay. So there was different eras. Well, it's the yeah. story of Lisa well, Rolick. I remember doing Thespian with her, and she was, I think, Cinderella. And we decided, she, we're putting on the performance, and we decided we were going to play a bunch of tricks on Lisa Rolick. And I remember at one point backstage, we are squirting them with squirt guns and they're supposed to be dancing like in a ballroom. Mm -hmm. And Lisa's like, is it raining in here? <laughs> <laughs> some of the pranks, some of the pranks we did, I mean, there fake, was stuff. Fake um, dog poop. 
I don't know if I did that one. I, I would switch stuff in people's lockers sometimes. So, you know, two people would get the slam book where they're reading about each other. What the hell? What yeah, that was great. That's book. fake news. Oh my God. Fake news. Do you yeah. remember my locker was like the central locker and everybody used it? As yep. a matter of fact, my combination was on the wall so everybody could get into it. <laughs> You two were way more mischievous. I'm going to have to give you an award for this. But do you think, <laughs> can you think of anybody more mischievous is my question. Yeah, you and Mark. Maybe, maybe. So we haven't yeah. said anything. Maybe. We're, we're going to find we that should, out. Maybe we should put the four of us together and do a, a little challenge. I don't know. Oh, that'd be fantastic. You ever <laughs> dress up like a swan and chase people through a bus stop? No, right? I did. No. <laughs> and I'm just <laughs> You're like abstract with lead. I'm gonna. This one is like we've been. Let's see. We started this. It's been about an hour and a half. This is yeah. for now. I'm just gonna wrap it up with. Who do you want to see coming on? You told me, Dennis. Anybody request from you, Cindy? Um, I don't know anybody really. I mean, okay. it's just so good to see you know all the yeah. old faces and hear the stories. I'm you know I'm enjoying it thoroughly. You know. Yeah. That'll be great. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely Dennis, do that. Dennis? Mark Rivera, Mark Rivera yeah. would be good. Ralph, Ralph, Ralph Schuberg. Yep. 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 Who else? Mark Parkins. We're Mark waiting for Parkins Mark. Mark Parkins would definitely Park. yeah. be fun. Yeah, he's, no. <laughs> he's great. He's great. He continued the ride. He's still groovy. It'll be good to see him. Okay, <laughs> guys. 